So let's suppose you're designing a board for a client and you get asked about the non-functional pads on Vias. Should you keep them or should you get rid of them? This is the type of question we get pretty often. So in this video, I'm gonna run over what non-functional pads are, whether or not you should keep them on your Vias, and of course, I'm gonna show you how to take them off your Vias in Ultium Designer. Let's get started. So first things first, NFP or non-functional pad, what is it? Well, if you have a multi-layer PCB and you look at it from the side view, when you have a via that routes through the board, normally what you would do is with this through hole via, you would have plating up on the top and bottom. And then of course you have the wall plating. However, on the internal layers, you could actually have the pad here as well. So. The pad essentially extends from the via wall into the next layer. And of course it would do that over here as well. So if I just keep drawing it, essentially your cross section may look something like this. And here we have the other side of the pad over here. These internal pads, when they do not connect to any traces on the internal layers are called NFPs or non-functional pads. They essentially perform no electrical function. They just exist as pads in the PCB stack up. And of course you then drill through them during fabrication, plate this up, and you have these pads left over that are attached to the via. So in this example where we have just top and bottom pads, you might be routing, let's say over here, or you might be doing it over here, it doesn't really matter. And then maybe let's say you're coming out this side of the via and then your signal travels over this way. However, you could land on this internal layer. And so by default, when you're creating a pad stack for your vias, it will leave these pads on the internal layers because when you create a general pad stack, of course the software doesn't know if you're actually gonna land with a signal on this layer, on this layer, or on the bottom layer. So by default, EDA tools will generally keep these pads on these internal layers and it will place them in the PCB layout. Now, once you place the via in a PCB layout, let's say maybe you have polygon pour on the internal layer that you're using to define ground. It will then apply the clearance rules between whatever ground is in here on the internal layer and it'll leave some clearance right here and right here. Same thing with this bottom pad. So the question now becomes, and this is actually the question that was asked by one of our viewers, whether you should keep these pads and just leave them or whether you should remove them so that when the hole is placed in the PCB layout and then the copper is placed on this internal signal layer, essentially the VIA will then just look like this. So you have no pad coming in like this. You have no pad over here on this side. And then same thing down here because you generally would do this symmetrically. We have no pad placed here or here, and you just have wall plating going all the way through the PCB stack up. So should you do this or should you leave them in the layer stack? Well, let's take a look. So first, let's look at some reasons why you should keep these non-functional pads. Now, I think most people would look at this side view of a PCB stack up and then they might say, hey, you should keep these because you're trying to make sure that there's some annular ring here on this internal layer. Now, that would be true if we were routing into one of these pads. Since we're not routing into these pads, that's what makes them non-functional. So one of the main arguments for keeping these non-functional pads is actually that they form an anchor to the dielectric interface here in this internal layer. Now here we're showing just a four layer stack up, but this same kind of idea would apply to a six layer stack up and so on and so forth. But the idea here is that they're bonded directly to this interface between these two dielectric materials. And so because of that, they form an anchor that helps to resist expansion during thermal cycling. So the idea is one of reliability. This is actually a double-edged sword because these can also thieve current during a pulsed plating process. Now your manufacturer should know, if they know what they're doing, they should know how to accommodate for these pads during a plating process to ensure that you get enough copper on this internal hole wall so that way you don't have an issue where thieved current then prevents electrodeposition of copper plating on the internal part of the via. So like most issues with via reliability that relate to thermal cycling, this is something that ideally should be tested first under your ideal thermal load in the environment in which you intend to deploy the board. 
If you're not sure and you know that the board will undergo some level of thermal cycling, it might be best to just keep the NFPs here for the reasons I just mentioned. Thermal cycling is an issue that affects other vias as well, specifically microvias, and that led to a 2019 IPC warning about microvia reliability and latent failures. There's an article that we're gonna to link to in the description that discusses that because it is an important reliability question around vias in general. What are some of the reasons that you might remove non-functional pads? Well, one of the principal reasons that is used to justify removal of non-functional pads is a condition called telegraphing. So when you have the non-functional pad here, the non-functional pad can prohibit or hinder resin from flowing into this region where you have this thin dielectric. So if you have a thin dielectric here, this pad can prevent the resin flow, and that would then reduce the strength of this bond in this region between the copper plating and the substrate. So this actually goes against one of the supposed benefits of non-functional pads, which is that they actually cause the via wall plating and all of the copper plating to adhere better to the substrate. So it's in this region where you get low flow, where they can actually prevent that adhesion and cause the bond to be weak to the dielectric. Another good reason to remove non-functional pads, especially if you have a dense board or a lot of dense routing on your internal layers, is that you then are just basically taking up some space in here that's not being used by anything. So just as an example, let's say for example here we have you know, a 10 mil diameter hole and then we have a 20 mil pad. So we're trying to go for like, let's say class three. Well, internally, we'd have a bunch of space in here that's being taken up by a bunch of copper that's not really doing anything. So if we wanted to, we could remove this and then we could route a trace closer to this particular via. So before, the via wall to, let's say, my trace spacing could have been, let's say, 16 mils with the non-functional pad because we might have, let's say, an eight mil pad right here. Once we remove that, we can actually get this clearance down quite a bit, and then we could route a trace into this region in the board, leaving, let's say, maybe eight mil clearance on an inner layer. So this is another reason to remove the non-functional pad. It's basically just taking up a bunch of space for routing. If you have some vias that are spaced very close together, you could actually open up a channel here in between these vias for a really thin trace. So that's one benefit of removing the non-functional pads. So another reason to remove the non-functional pads is that these pads, once they're placed on an inner layer, you'll have to drill through them during fabrication. And so every time you have to drill through one of those pads, you're essentially using up a drill hit on that drill, and that's gonna reduce the life of your drill. That's gonna increase your tooling cost, which then increases your total fab cost. Now, if you're just producing some prototypes and you don't have an extremely complex or dense board, and you don't have to do, let's say, a thousand drill hits, probably not gonna be a big impact on cost. But once you have to scale that to, let's say, thousands or maybe tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of units, all of those costs really add up. And so this is one aspect of cost optimization in a PCB once you have to prepare it for scaling. So another reason to remove the non-functional pads is because of signal integrity. So if you've watched any of our other videos on the impedance of vias and signal propagation through via, you will know that the impedance, Z sub zero, and the propagation constant looking through this via actually depends on this antipad size. So the antipad inside this ground plane with respect to the pad size up here on the top layer is an actually a major determinant of the impedance of this via and the propagation delay. Because the antipad size determines via impedance, it also affects the S parameters, S11 and S21 for a signal that's propagating through this via. Now, if I leave my non-functional pads here inside of this via structure, then what we have here is we essentially have some additional capacitance between the via and my ground plane. This spacing essentially just got smaller. This via is essentially acting like it has a slightly smaller anti-pad than it actually does. So because I have then increased the parallel capacitance of this via looking into this via, um, I believe what would happen is you would have a case where the uh, characteristic impedance of the via goes down. So if you remember, 
characteristic impedance for a via uh, in the lumped element model or in a distributed element model is going to be L over C square root. You increase C, you would then expect Z to decrease. So what's going to happen is you're going to have an effect on the insertion loss, S21, and the return loss, S11. So should you keep the non-functional pads or lose the non-functional pads? Well, this is one of those important engineering and reliability questions that you have to weigh in your design. Sometimes it's best to keep them, sometimes it's best to lose them. It's up to you to determine whether or not it's best for your design. Now, if you choose to take the non-functional pads off, there's a pretty simple way to do it in Altium Designer. Make sure you get your free copy of Altium Designer so you can follow along with this quick demo. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to take those non-functional pads off your vias. Okay, so I'm in our interface board project and what I'm gonna do now is just zoom in to one of these vias and we'll take a look at what we need to do to remove non-functional pads. So first, you'll notice if I just scroll through the stack up here, you will see that on layer three, we do indeed have some non-functional pads. You can see here also on some of these other layers, we then have non-functional pads as well. So here, let's say on layer three, I want to remove these pads from these two vias. Here, all I need to do is just select this, and then here in the properties panel, you'll see this area where it says via stack. So by default, simple will be selected. And when you have simple selected, the diameter that you set here is gonna to apply to all layers. In order to configure this, what I can actually do is go over to full stack. Now here with full stack, what I can do on let's say sig1 is I can actually change this so that the diameter matches the hole size. And then if I do that and hit enter, you will see that now I'm just left with a hole here and then this hole matches up with this pad that's on the top layer. So we just have a pad up on the top layer and then we have our hole on the internal layer with no pad. And then you see here down on the bottom layer, we still have the landing pad with the trace coming off of it. So it really is as simple as that. You just go over to full stack, set the diameter. If you want, you can even set the diameter to zero. And of course, it's just gonna leave the hole here in the PCB layout in this internal layer. Okay, everybody, so this has been a quick intro into non-functional pads, and it's an important question that crops up around reliability, and it sometimes crops up around signal integrity. So to learn more about non-functional pads and some of the reasons you should keep them or get rid of them, we have some great resources in the description. Make sure to check out those resources and learn as much as you can. All right, thanks again, everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave the comments and questions in the comments section, and last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.